You're thinking of taking a nap. Is it a good idea or a bad idea? Well, it might be both, to be honest with you. All right. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weenie. I'm Dr. Paul Zalza. Today we're going to explore the science behind napping. Okay, that's that little sleep that you get in the middle of the day. You feel like doing it. You're not sure if you should. You want to push on through or should you give in and just get some shut eye? And there's a little bit of science behind it about kind of the duration of the nap, why it works, why it might not work, why sometimes you don't feel refreshed. We're going to talk about all that stuff. Right, okay. Now, it's kind of in a lot of cultures. They have that siesta, you know, after a meal. Many cultures have a little downtime right. in the early afternoon, right? In parts of Europe where they just shut things down. And that is based on your body's circadian rhythm. Okay. So naturally, after lunch, our bodies start to fade a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's why the ideal time to nap is actually 1 to 3 p.m. And that's all, all the <laughs> way from 1 to 3, like a two-hour nap? So not necessarily, but okay. that's kind of the window. Right. Mostly because that's when you're starting to get tired from your day, and also that is going to be the least disruptive to your sleep at night. Because obviously, if the later in the day you take a nap, you might mm -hmm. mess up your ability to go to sleep in your normal schedule. Because we talked about this yeah. before, you want to have a, a relatively pseudo-rigid mm -hmm. sleep schedule where you go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time. Right, and if you have a nap late in the, in the day, you might not be able to get to sleep. Right. I could nap any time. You could, yeah. Right now, if you gave me the chance. Right. Okay. So, so there are different lengths of naps. So naps would probably range in the area of 10 minutes to 90 minutes. Beyond 90 minutes, you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> if you're taking a four-hour yeah. nap, that's yeah. actually called a sleep. That's not yeah. a nap. Yeah. Um, Don't sugarcoat that one. No. You've gone to bed. See, my references always come back to Seinfeld. Do you remember that time that George, when he was working for the Yankees, built that, okay. that bed underneath his, <laughs> his desk, desk so that he could that. take naps? I do remember. That's not a bad idea. So classic. Our, oh, our days, it's tricky to take a nap. It is. It is. Office days, it's a bit tricky. Yeah, a little bit tricky. Paperwork okay, day. So, so a short nap would be a nap of, of 10 to 20 minutes. And the thought behind these kinds of naps is that it's been shown to improve things like alertness, memory, reaction time. So it has very measurable benefits to kind of faster thinking functions. And that makes sense, right? If, you're feel, if your body's telling you you're feeling tired, you're feeling groggy, then a nap seems to be the right answer. Right. And, and those shorter naps, some people would say that that 10 to 20, 20, 10 to 20 minute nap is actually the best nap to have. Okay. You know, we've talked before about the stages of sleep. Yes. In that 10 to 20 minutes, you're probably not going to get into the deep sleep or the REM sleep. That's and, a 90 minute cycle. And that's actually why it works. You're spending your time in stage one and stage two, so you can wake up restored, not yeah. groggy. So if you do have a nap, say in that 30 to 60 minute range, mm -hmm. there's a higher chance that you're going to wake up in either stage three sleep or REM sleep. And that's when you get something called sleep inertia, where even though you've slept for a while, you wake up and you actually feel worse. Yeah, you've still got those hormones, you've still got those chemicals that are associated with deep sleep yep. in your body when you're trying to walk around and function. I feel like I had a lot of that when I was studying like in undergrad and med school. Sleep like inertia? That, where you like would have a nap like 45 minutes and you wake up and you're like, what yeah. the heck, I feel way yeah. worse. Yeah way it's worse. True. So you're like, should have just stayed up, which yeah. is probably is not the right answer either. But so that 30 to 60 minute range is probably the worst length of time for a nap. Right. So then the next one would be that longer nap would be the 90 minute nap. And that is where you would go through a complete sleep cycle. We talked about how one, two, three REM takes about 90 minutes. and You cycle through these multiple times in an average night's sleep. If you get a 90 minute nap, you actually go through a full cycle. So that becomes restorative. Yeah. And when you wake up from that nap, it's called tomorrow <laughs> because that's pretty well a full sleep. 90 minutes is not a full sleep. Wow. So what I would tell you though, simply like, oh, so I can just take a nap and restore my sleep. And we've talked a little bit about sleep debt. So when you don't get enough sleep every day, so you're not getting your seven hours, you're getting say five hours for five nights in a row, you accumulate what's called sleep debt. Mm -hmm. This has very negative health consequences in the short term, but primarily in the long term, obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, even premature death. So you, you don't want to accumulate this. Now, can a nap make up for the sleep debt? I don't think that's your if that's your sleep solution that's not going to work so i totally agree no. so it can pay back a little bit of the debt but it's not enough you need to get the sleep at night that, so, yeah. so that's we'll not going to replace that nap is not going to replace your proper seven to nine hours of sleep at night right so it pays back a little bit but not enough so don't think that this is going to be your your long-term solution so um, a 90 minute nap is okay you don't want to go much beyond that because then you're going to get into another cycle and then the longer you go the higher the chances that it's going to be disruptive for your following night's sleep 
there. S same thing for later in the day. You don't want to have a 90 minute nap at four in the afternoon because you're not going to be able to sleep at nine or 10 o'clock whenever your regular bedtime is. Right, and now you may be thinking, I'm sleepy, I'm groggy, what's wrong with me? How come I feel like napping now and the rest of the world doesn't and no famous people do? Yes. Let's tell you about something. Okay, let's start, at the beginning. Let's start with Winston Churchill. A napper. Yeah, he was a napper. Apparently during Second World War, he would routinely take a one to two hour nap in the afternoon and he felt strongly that this helped him focus and strategize at night in order to win the Second World War. I don't think he told the soldiers about that because I'd be really upset if they I was were out there on the front line while the general's napping. Yes. Uh, number, number two is uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Mm. And I mean, good evidence to show that naps can improve our creativity. So that's probably why da Vinci felt more creative. One of my favorites is Einstein. Yes. Einstein napped. Yeah, he Einstein felt was a napper. He could solve his mathematical problems while he was resting. And kind of like we talked about before, consolidating those memories and solidifying thoughts to allow you to be more uh, goal oriented. And then the last one is a really interesting one. So there's uh, an artist named Salvador Dali. Melting clocks. You've seen his famous melting clock. So he had a really interesting way to nap. I think it's actually tormenting. So he would sleep with a metal spoon between his finger, his index finger and his thumb. And he would sit, sleep in a chair. And that spoon would be above either a metal plate or a metal bowl. When he relaxed enough, when his nap got deep enough that his muscles relaxed and he dropped that spoon, which likely was not very long, that's when his nap ended. And I'm convinced that that's why he painted all these melting clocks. He's like, I just need to get, <laughs> get a little more sleep when I'm having a nap. He was a, a peculiar guy. I mean, I remember Super wacky him pictures. Years ago, and I think he, he thought he was like a divinely inspired artist kind of thing. He was out there. He was torturing himself, I think. Yeah. Um, I think that lends quickly, though, to um, sleep hygiene. So even when you're having a nap, ideally, you want to set yourself up for a successful nap. So maybe not the back seat of the car. You know, you want to be yeah. ideally in your bed in a dark, cool. Well, or the front seat. Quiet probably. room, yeah, wherever. But make it so that it's like regular sleep so that the nap is more purposeful and successful. Right, fair. Last thing, what about napping moms? You know, I mean, you're a new mom, your baby naps regularly because babies need way more sleep than the seven to nine hours that we do. Oh what do you think that the science says about a mom taking a nap with the baby? I don't know what the science says, but I say do what you can to survive. I and mean, that is one of the toughest jobs to go through. Yeah. And whatever you can do to survive those early years. Totally agree. Shout out to all moms. So I'd say the data is mixed as far as the science goes, but it does make sense. Once you become very sleep deprived, getting sleep when you can, where you can, whatever. And if you're um, the dad, that's not a good time to take a nap. No. No, not during those early years. No, you get up. No. Help get out. out. Forget in. about sleep hygiene. Don't even. Just help. Help there as you. much as you can. Now you know, naps can be very good for you. They can be helpful. They can be restorative if they are a little more calculated. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment about your napping strategy. Wake up. Video's over. You are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.